Myself, Dr. Jibran Ahmed presents to you Simply Pathology and today we are back with a very important session. Today we are going to read about a very important and interesting question that is chronic myelomonocytic leukemia. Now it is a very very commonly asked question in the exam and you know a lot of long answer questions are being asked from CMML. Now if you see over here CMML is one of the most important entities under MDS, MP and Neoplasm. So what is it that we are going to read today? So today we are going to read in details about chronic myelomonocytic leukemia. Okay, and we are going to read about the definition, the criteria, as well as uh, uh, the lab diagnosis, including the peripheral blood smear findings, bone marrow findings, cytochemistry, immunophenotyping, along with that the differential diagnosis, prognosis in details, molecular as well as cytogenetic pathology. And in the end, we are also going to see that what are the important changes that is, uh, you know, there uh, uh, in this current WHO 5th edition uh, as compared to the previous 4th edition with regards to CMML. So without wasting any time, let, let us begin today's topic of discussion. As you know, CMML is one of the entities under MDS, MP and Neoplasm. And this category of, of myeloid neoplasm is defined by overlapping pathologic and molecular features of both myelodysplastic syndrome as well as myeloproliferative neoplasm which is manifesting clinically either as cytopenias or cytosis. Now the classification includes major revisions in the diagnostic criteria of CMML as well as the terminology changes. So before we go forward let me just show you this particular uh, classification of MDS MPN neoplasm. So the one above okay this one is basically the, uh, uh, the latest classification of MDS MPN neoplasm that is the fifth edition classification whereas the one below it is uh, the old classification uh, in the WHO fourth edition. So you must be thinking that what are the changes. So let me highlight the changes in the classification system. If you see the entity that is JMML that is juvenile myelomonocytic leukemia it is no more under the heading of MDS MPN. Rather if you see rather if you see this JMML if you see it is under the heading of myeloproliferative neoplasm. Now there are certain other changes also. If you see certain entities like atypical CML BCR ABL1 negative it has been completely renamed as MDS MPN neoplasm with neutrophilia. Similarly MDS MPN neoplasm with ring sideroblast and thrombocytosis it has been renamed as MDS MPN with SF3B1 mutation and thrombocytosis. Similarly, MDS MPN neoplasm unclassifiable is now called as MDS MPN NOS. So these are some of the terminology changes and some entities which have been removed. Okay, so this is the current WHO fifth edition classification of MDS MPN neoplasm. Now we are going to start with the chronic myelomonocytic leukemia. So it is a myeloid neoplasm with MDS MPN features with persistent peripheral blood monocytosis with molecular alterations. So persistent in the previous edition, the meaning of persistent was at least three months. Okay, at least three months. But in the current edition, they have not given any timeline as to the nature of persistent. They have just used the term persistent. So if anyone asks you, just uh, say three months. Okay, according to the uh, uh, previous fourth edition, it is three months. Okay, because it has not been mentioned in the current edition. So CMML, it is a myeloid neoplasm with MDS MPN features with persistent peripheral blood monocytosis with molecular alteration. Coming to the diagnostic criteria, there has been a major revision to the diagnostic criteria. Now the diagnostic criteria is divided under two headings. The first heading is the prerequisite criteria. There is a total of four prerequisite criteria and the supporting criteria. There is a total of three supporting criteria. So what is it under the prerequisite criteria if you see? So what are the important or the prerequisite criteria which has to be there? So there has to be persistent elevation of monocytoid cells more than equal to 500 cells per deciliter as well as there has to be relative monocytosis that is more than equal to 10% of the uh, uh, myeloid series cells should be monocyte. So there has to be persistent that is more than 500 cells per deciliter peripheral blood monocytosis as well as relative monocytosis that is more than equal to 10% of the myeloid series cells should be monocytes. Second important condition is the blast percentage should be less than 20% both in the peripheral blood as well as in the bone marrow. Now the, uh, now the third important condition is that this should not satisfy the criteria of CML or any other myeloproliferative neoplasm. So there should not satisfy the criteria of CML or any other myeloproliferative neoplasm. Fourthly, the condition that is CMML should not 
uh, you know, satisfy the criteria of myeloid or lymphoid neoplasm with eosinophilia and defining molecular alteration. So they should not fulfill the criteria of any other myeloproliferative neoplasms, okay, including CML as well as including myeloid lymphoid neoplasm with eosinophilia and defining molecular alteration. So they should not uh, you know fulfill these criteria so after having uh, uh, you know discussed about the prerequisite criteria now there are certain supporting criteria what are those number one supporting criteria is the presence of dysplasia in more than equal to one lineage one myeloid lineage okay and dysplasia should be present in at least 10 percent of cells okay in the bone marrow okay dysplasia means when uh, in any lineage if dysplasia has to be defined it should be present in 10 percent of cells of that lineage in the bone marrow Okay, the second criteria is acquired clonal cytogenetic or molecular abnormality has to be present. So one or more acquired or uh, clonal cytogenetic or molecular abnormality has been there. So what are these uh, molecular abnormalities or cytogenic abnormalities? We will read at, at, at a later part. I, okay, I will tell you. Thirdly, the presence of abnormal partitioning of the peripheral blood monocyte subsets okay so what is that what is the meaning of abnormal partitioning we are going to read in detail when we discuss about immunophenotyping okay okay so these are the prerequisite criteria and these are the supporting criteria so for diagnosis what is it that is required so for diagnosis the most important thing all the prerequisite criteria has to be fulfilled number one then with regards to the supporting criteria okay a diagnosis is made depending on the monocytosis level so if the amount of monocytes are more than equal to 1000 per deciliter then one or more supporting criteria suffices for diagnosis but if the amount of monocytes is less than 1000 per deciliter then both supporting criteria both number one and number two the first and second supporting criteria has to be fulfilled so this is the prerequisite criteria for making a diagnosis of CMML. All prerequisite, if monocyte more than equal to 1000, one or more supporting criteria will suffice. If less than 1000, then both one and two supporting criteria has to be fulfilled. One and two meaning dysplasia has to be present, acquired clonal cytogenetic or molecular abnormality has to be present. Okay. Now, very importantly, uh, CMML can be classified in other ways as well. So what are the ways of classifying CML depending on the WBC count? If the count is less than 13,000 per deciliter, then we call it as myelodysplastic CMML, which is also written as MD CMML. Okay, but if the count is high, more than equal to 13,000 per deciliter, then we are calling it as myeloproliferative CMML. Okay, it is called as myeloproliferating. So depending on the WBC count, okay, whether it is less than or more than 13,000, we call it as myelodysplastic or myeloproliferative CMML. Now, the second important way of classifying CMML is on the basis of BLAST percentage as well as on the basis of blast equivalent now remember blast includes both the myeloblast as well as the monoblast okay it includes both myelo as well as monoblast and pro monocyte is acting as a blast equivalent so the the entire percentage of blast as well as the blast um, uh, 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 equivalent if you see so, so if it is, if the total quantity of blast and blast equivalent is less than 5% in the peripheral blood and less than 10% in the bone marrow, we are calling it as CMML type 1. Whereas if it is between 6 to 19% in the peripheral blood and 10 to 19% in the bone marrow, we are calling it as CMML 2. Now, if you remember in the previous edition, there used to be one more level that is CMML 0. In the latest edition, okay, CMML 0 has been removed. Okay, it is no longer used in the current WHO 5th edition. In the current edition, only we are having CMML 1 in which the percentage of blast and blast equivalent is less than 5% in peripheral blood and less than 10% in bone marrow. Whereas in CMML 2, it is 6 to 19% in peripheral blood and 10 to 19% in the bone marrow. Okay, whereas CMML 0, which was earlier defined as less than 1% blast in the peripheral blood and less than 5% in the bone marrow. Okay, this entity is no longer used in the current edition. Why? Because it doesn't have any prognostic significance. Now coming to the next important session that is the etiopathogenesis. So CMML, it is a disease of elderly affecting uh, you know individuals more than 80 years of age. Males are affected more than females. Okay, and it is affecting whites more than blacks. Okay, 
uh, and it is associated with age related clonal hematopoiesis and familial mutations is there okay so there is an age related clonal hematopoiesis and familial mutation so what happens that over here if you see that there, there are a series of mutations which are affecting series of you know uh, 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 functions like dna methylation histone modification okay and these mutations are all age related okay these are all age related so there are mutations in the genes which are affecting either dna methylation or histone modification or pre mrna splicing or cell signaling okay so there are mutation okay uh, for example in processes of dna methylation for example in genes which are regulating dna methylation example tet2 or mutation in genes example asxl1 which is uh, you know uh, uh, involved in histone modification or for example mutation in genes example srsf2 u2f1 these these are genes which are involved in pre mrna splicing or there are mutations in the genes involved in cell signaling example nros and all these mutations they take place in a step wise fashion okay like in dna methylation then dna modification then pre mrna splicing okay then after that you know uh, cell signaling etc like this and all these uh, genes which are involved they are involved in an age associated effect okay so these are age associated changes or age associated mutation in the genes are taking place okay so because of these mutations it gives rise to a mutant immature group of cells okay or mutant immature clones okay and these mutant immature clones okay they are having capacity of myelin proliferation not only that they are also hypersensitive to certain growth factors like like granulocyte monocyte colony stimulating factors it is because of these effects okay that there is a myelin proliferation and there is proliferation of not only all the granulocytes but also the monocytes so the monocytes granulocytes okay as well as the plasma cytoid dendritic cells okay all of them proliferate actually monocytes are also one of granulocytes okay i i should write it as other granulocytes okay so all other granulocytes are also proliferating in addition to the monocytes as well as plasma cytoid dendritic cells are also proliferating okay over a period of time they undergo certain uh, you know epigenetic reprogramming of myelin cells also occurs which later on leads to abnormal partition of peripheral blood monocyte now what is this abnormal partition of peripheral blood monocyte we will read in detail under the section of ipt so please stay tuned till the end of the lecture okay so there are these mutations affecting dna methylation histone modification pre mrna splicing and cell signaling uh, via mutation in several genes that i have already shown okay which is leading to an an immature mutant clone which is having capacity for myelin proliferation and, and and they are extensively hypersensitive to granulocyte monocyte colony stimulating factor and ultimately you know few of these granulocytes are also undergoing undergoing certain epigenetic reprogramming which is leading to abnormal partition of peripheral blood monocyte subset okay and excessive increase in amount of these subsets okay so what are some of the other factors which are also involved in this pathogenesis of cmml so mature cells of the leukemic clone which are releasing cytokines and chemokines as well as down regulation or decreased secretion of interleukin 10 both these are also involved in myelomonocytic expansion they are also involved in myelomonocytic expansion so this is about the etiopathogenesis of cmml next we are going to discuss the lab diagnosis in detail so first we are going to see what are the changes we see in the peripheral blood very importantly we see relative monocytosis along with immature monocytes as well as immature granulocyte precursors immature granulocytes are also seen okay okay now because of the presence of this immature you know uh, 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 myeloid precursors which are present so myeloproliferative variety of cmml they you know they resemble cml so myeloproliferative cmml might resemble cml because of the presence of immature precursors okay but what is very important that in case of cml okay the immature precursors mainly includes the neutrophils and the myelocytes so there's a myelocyte bulge and neutrophil bulge whereas in cmml all the precursors are uniformly elevated okay and they are much more so the elevation of immature precursors are much more in in myeloproliferative cmml as compared to only cml okay okay along with that there is some dysplastic changes so there is disgranulopoiesis along with that there will be presence of large platelets and uh, usually okay uh, especially in the myelodysplastic variety of cmml you will see anemia as well there will be certain cytopenias in the uh, uh, myelodysplastic series or myelodysplastic cmml okay coming to the bone marrow if you look at the cellularity they are hypercellular 
erythropoiesis is relatively reduced okay and there is presence of dyserythropoiesis which is characterized by presence of megaloblastoid change along with the presence of ring sideroblast then if you look at the granulopoiesis granulopoiesis is increased with myelomonocytic predominance along with that there is also dysgranulopoiesis which is characterized by hypo or hyper segmentation with abnormal granulation if you look at megakaryopoiesis megakaryopoiesis is also increased with dysmegakaryopoiesis uh, which is characterized by the presence of small megakaryocytes or megakaryocytes with hypo or abnormally lobated nucleus so this is the bone marrow picture so let me show you now with the help of diagram what we see in the peripheral blood and in the bone marrow okay so as you can see over here monocytes so mainly in cml what do you see you are seeing monocytosis okay so you can see the cells of the monocytic lineage mainly as you can appreciate over here these are the monoblast you can see the open chromatin prominent nucleoli can be appreciated over here okay and uh, these are large monoblastic cells okay and they are and look at the cytoplasm they are ground glass cytoplasm bluish gray cytoplasm apart from that not only that you can see a lot of immature precursors of the granulocyte series as well okay you can see the immature granulocytic series are there okay some of them are having abnormal lobation hypo um, you know hypo granularity is also there you can see the myelocytes also over here you can see the cells or the immature precursors can be appreciated as well over here so monocytosis and the presence of myelocytes metamyelocytes and promyelocytes is typical of cmml okay in the peripheral blood as we can appreciate over here okay so we can see that there is some amount of dysgranulopoiesis that can be appreciated this is a pseudohelgic fluid anomaly you can see okay there are two lobes and you can see hypogranularity over here another monoblast monocytic series cells is there you can see abnormal lobation over here okay okay now coming to the bone marrow the first thing that you can appreciate over here that the bone marrow is hypercellular the bone marrow is hypercellular as we can appreciate over here you can see that along with the the, the myelocyte uh, you know along with the myeloid precursors you know you are having a lot of monocytic cells as you can see this is one pro monocyte okay which is having a folded nucleus i don't know if you are able to appreciate this is having a folded nucleus uh, another pro monocyte uh, uh, series of cells we can see this is having a folded nucleus as we can appreciate over here okay so there are many cells of monocytic lineage and there are many cells of myeloid lineage again there are many cells as you, as you can appreciate which is also showing certain uh, you know uh, 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 dysgranulopoiesis as well as you can appreciate over here okay next very importantly we can see we can see uh, you know there is dyserythropoiesis also which is characterized by the presence of open chromatin or sieve like chromatin as we can see we can also appreciate certain you know dysgranulopoiesis as you can see abnormal lobation of the neutrophil with hypogranularity can be appreciated over here okay apart from that we can also see the immature precursors okay the myelocytes metamyelocytes can be appreciated okay as we can appreciate over here over here what we can see is the presence of pro monocytes with nuclear lobation as you can appreciate over here also there are certain monocytes which are having abnormal uh, you know lobations these are also monocytic series cells you can see the cytoplasm as well okay you can also see certain abnormally lobated uh, you know uh, granulocyte precursors as you can appreciate this is in the high power view you can see this pseudopelga huid anomaly abnormal lobation of the nucleus and you can also see that there is hypogranularity over here as we can appreciate okay even if you look okay certain you know erythroid series cells there is a nucleus cytoplasmic asynchrony which is also seen over here okay okay so basically the, this is mainly about the peripheral blood as well as the bone marrow picture of cmml okay next we are going to see the cytochemistry part so in the cytochemistry okay usually we can highlight the monocytic series with the help of alpha naphthyl aceto acetate um, uh, esterase uh, then alpha naphthyl butyl uh, butyrate esterase and chloroacetyl esterase also so these are the three important uh, you know uh, cytochemical uh, stains which can be used to highlight the monocytic cells and to differentiate them from dysplastic granulocytes and other granulocytic precursors now with the help of ipt or fcm the most important thing is to understand the concept of abnormal partitioning okay so very importantly as we told that there are presence of blast as well as blast equivalents along with that immature myeloid precursor cells are present which is uh, positive for cd34 as well as cd117 now the monocytic series usually show positivity for cd14 and cd16 and depending on the the positivity of these two markers we can divide them under three headings 
So those which are CD14 positive and CD16 negative are called as the classical monocytes. And in case of CMML, their percentages increase more than 94%. Okay, so this increase in the classical variety of monocytes to more than 94% in CMML, okay, is called as abnormal partitioning and it is one of the important supporting criteria. It is very helpful in differentiating your uh, CMML from other reactive, uh, you know, cause of monocytosis or other, uh, you know, uh, conditions of MDS, MPN or other, uh, you know, uh, conditions like MDS. So it is helpful because dysplasia is also seen in CMML. So this abnormal partitioning helps in differentiating from other myeloproliferative neoplasm or other myelodysplastic, uh, uh, you know, conditions or MDS, MPN condition. This is very important. Okay. Now the next type, the next phenotype that is there is CD14 positive along with CD16 positive that is both positive. Okay. This is uh, basically seen in intermediate variety of monocytes. Okay. And lastly, we are having CD14, you know, low, low expression and CD16 positive. Okay. This is the non-classical uh, uh, monoblast. This is the non-classical uh, monocytes. Okay. Monocytes. Now, one thing you have to remember whenever you are diagnosing a case of CMML, always rule out any other, uh, you know, secondary factor which is causing monocytosis like autoimmune disease and other systemic inflammatory conditions. Because in both such conditions, okay, there is an increased in amount of intermediate variety of monocytes. And once the intermediate monocytes are increased, this abnormal uh, partitioning is no more applicable or is no more there or doesn't work. So as a result, you should always rule out any autoimmune disease or any systemic inflammatory conditions when you're diagnosing CMML, okay? So apart from the CD1416 and CD34, CD117, okay, we are having certain aberrant, uh, you know, uh, uh, expression of certain markers in mature monocytes. For example, there's an increased expression of CD56 with decreased expression of CD14, CD16 and CD64. If you look at the IHC, the IHC is uh, characterized by the, you know, for uh, demonstration of the monocytoid cells by immunohistochemistry, we can use CD14, CD68 and CD163. Okay. Now coming to the bone marrow biopsy, wherein we are going to do the morphological evaluation. Now you have to remember one important thing that we have already read in details about the morphological features of the monocytes, how the monocyte looks like, how the promonocyte looks like, how the monoblast looks like. Okay. So over here, we are not, you know, uh, read, read, reading in details about the same. So please go through the lecture of normal hematopoiesis. Okay. So basically you see monocytosis in the bone marrow biopsy. Now mature monocytes and the immature monocytes, usually they have condensed chromatin with inconspicuous nucleoli, whereas the promonocyte and monoblast, they are having open chromatin with prominent nucleoli. Now, if you remember monoblast, usually they are larger and they are having a rounded nuclei and they have prominent nucleoli with a ground glass, uh, pale blue grayish cytoplasm. Whereas the promonocyte, if you see the nucleus is quite folded, okay, the nucleus will be folded in case of your promonocyte okay and cytoplasm again the same features bluish gray cytoplasm is there okay and promonocyte it is a blast equivalent it is a blast equivalent only another thing in the bone marrow you will see that there is a slight increase in the reticulin fibers in the bone marrow now coming to the clinical features coming to the clinical features of cmml so they usually present with anemia thrombocytopenia but few in few conditions there might be increased platelet count as well and the WBC count varies, okay? It might be more, it can be normal, it might be reduced as well. So depending on the features, CMML can be myelodysplastic or myeloproliferative. So in case of myelodysplastic CMML, they will present with cytopenia, so they will be anemia, so patient will present with fatigue, okay? Or they will be, they, they will be reduced platelet count, thrombocytopenia, so patient present with bleeding. They will be reduced leukocyte count, so patient present with recurrent infection. So these are the cytopenias, okay? If the CMML is myeloproliferative, then they will present with constitutional symptoms, which is also seen in other myeloproliferative neoplasm like fever, night sweats, weight loss, etc. Apart from that, there is polygonal hypergamma globulinemia. 20% of the cases can present with autoimmune disease or systemic inflammatory response syndrome. Okay. Now coming to the molecular pathology, if you look at the molecular pathology over here, so uh, you can see that we have divided the changes. Uh, there are certain cytogenetic changes. There are certain mutations. Okay. So if you look at the cytogenetics, 70% is having normal karyotype. The most common cytogenetic abnormalities are 
ट्राइजोमी एट डिलीशन सेवन क्यू लॉस ऑफ क्रोमोजोम वाई नाउ डिपेंडिंग ऑन द टाइप ऑफ योर साइटोजेनेटिक एबनॉमेलिटी दैट इज प्रेजेंट यू कैन स्ट्रेटिफाई द सी एम एम एल इंटू लो रिस्क हाई रिस्क इंटरमीडिएट रिस्क सो दो विद नॉर्मल कैरोटाइप इज लो रिस्क और लॉस ऑफ क्रोमोजोम वाई अगेन इज अ लो रिस्क ओके नाउ दोज हैविंग ट्राइजोमी एट क्रोमोजोम सेवन ऑल्टरेशन और कॉम्प्लेक्स कैरोटाइप कैरेक्टराइज बाई मोर देन इक्वल टू थ्री एबनॉमेलिटी सो दे आर सेट टू बी हाई रिस्क एंड एनी सर्टोजेनेटिक एबनॉमेलिटी इन बिटवीन द लो एंड हाई रिस्क इज दे आर ऑफ इंटरमीडिएट रिस्क ओके सो दिस इज द रिस्क स्ट्रेटिफिकेशन ऑफ सी एम एम एल बेस्ड ऑन साइटोजेनेटिक्स नाउ द सेकेंड इंपॉर्टेंट मॉलिकुलर पैथोलॉजी इज द प्रेजेंस ऑफ म्यूटेशन एंड द वन विच आर शोन इन ब्राउन ओके इफ यू रिमेंबर वी हैव सीन दैट आइदर यू नो एटलीस्ट वन ऑफ द Uh, you know clonal alterations you know cytogenetic or molecular alterations has to be there acquired clonal cytogenetic or molecular alteration has to be present so what are these uh, molecular alterations that has to be there so they have been highlighted in brown color let me just show you so number one is epigenetic alteration involving asxl1 gene ezh2 bacor gene okay other gene which are affected can be tet2 idh1 idh2 now genes you know which is uh, regulating spliceosome activity so if there is any mutation in such genes like srsf2 usf1 sf3b1 zrsr2 then the ones which are affecting the cellular signaling like uh, cbl kros nros etc then there are others also like uh, you know the you know mutations involving ranex1 or set bp1 gene okay or other genes like npm1 flt33 now the ones which are shown in brown okay they are the ones which are actually you know uh, important for the criteria so when you are searching for mutation molecular uh, um, you know uh, abnormalities so mutation in one of these brown genes okay it is essential for diagnosis okay under the supporting heading or under the supporting criteria okay next the prognosis is quite poor survival is limited to 2 to 3 years there is a risk of uh, aml transformation and the risk is 15 to 20% and the definitive treat treatment is to go for allogeneic hematopoietic stem cell transplant now coming to the differential diagnosis very very important the first thing is you know you can uh, you, you know you can confuse cmml with cml okay especially those kind of cml which are showing monocytosis that is the cml with p190 bcr1 bcr abl1 fusion gene they very much you know they resemble cmml1 so how to differentiate for definitive uh, you know differentiation you have to go for rt pcr or fish to detect the presence of bcr abl1 fusion gene secondly there are many conditions wherein you are giving cytotoxic therapy to the patient for some neoplasm and post therapy the patient is developing cmml okay post therapy the patient develops cmml in that case we do not uh, you know we do not uh, diagnose that case as a cmml rather we call it as a post cytotoxic therapy or or post uh, you know post therapy myeloid neoplasm okay there is a separate heading so we basically label it as that now many myeloproliferative neoplasms they present with cmml like features but if they do not fulfill the features of cmml okay if they are you know so they should be classified according to the mpn for which the criteria are being fulfilled remember this fact so many mpn can present like cmml so remember this in mind so in that situation it should not be labeled as cmml it should be labeled as that particular myeloproliferative neoplasm for which the criteria are being fulfilled and there are certain mpns which develop over a course of time they develop a subclone and they completely fulfill the criteria of cmml in that situation you do not relabel that particular uh, you know entity as cmml rather you call it as an mpn which has progressed to cmml okay so this is very important the fourth important uh, uh, differential is your you know diagnosis is all the conditions where you have reactive monocytosis okay so you have to rule out and exclude all conditions of reactive monocytosis and fifthly very importantly you should you know uh, differentiate it from acute myelomonocytic leukemia that is the m4 okay how do you differentiate by the blast percentage okay so over here the blast percentage is more than equal to 20% whereas in cmml it is less than 20% so this is the differential diagnosis of cmml okay so we have already discussed in details about them so we are just scrolling past them okay so as i told you that in the end okay please stay tuned that i want to discuss what are the important changes okay uh, which is there uh, in the cmml in this current edition in the fifth edition versus the fourth edition so as we know the prototype and the most common mds mpn is cmml which is characterized by sustained peripheral blood monocytosis 
the diagnostic criteria are revised to include prerequisite and supporting criteria. Now the first prerequisite criteria is persistent or absolute. Okay, that is more than equal to 500 cells per deciliter as well as relative peripheral blood monocytosis. So absolute as well as relative monocytosis. Absolute means where the total count should be more than equal to 500 cells per deciliter and relative means as a percentage of all the WBCs, the monocytes should be more than equal to 10%. Okay. Now this cutoff for absolute monocytosis is lowered. Previously the cutoff was 1000 but now it is 500. Okay, why? So as to incorporate all the cases which were formerly referred to as oligomonocytic CMML. Now to enhance the diagnostic uh, accuracy when absolute monocytosis is more than equal to 500 but less than 1000. Detection of one or more clonal cytogenetic or molecular abnormality and documentation of dysplasia in at least one lineage is required. As we have already seen that both criteria supporting criteria 1 and 2 has to be fulfilled. Now remember a new supporting criteria that is now introduced is the concept of abnormal partitioning of peripheral blood monocyte subsets. Now two disease subtypes with salient clinical and genetic features are now formally recognized that we have already seen okay less than 13,000 more than 13,000 so we are not discussing that again. Now myeloproliferative CMML is commonly associated with activating RAS pathway mutations and adverse clinical outcomes. Now the BLAST based subgroup CMMLO as I have already told you it has been eliminated because it doesn't provide any or provides very little prognostic significance. Atypical CML as I told you renamed as MDS MPN with neutrophilia. Then uh, uh, very importantly we have seen that, uh, that MDS MPN with ring sideroblast and thrombocytosis has been renamed as MDS MPN with SF3V1 mutation. Then the term MDS MPN with ring sideroblast and thrombocytosis has been retained as an acceptable term to be used for cases with wild type SF3B1 and more than equal to 15% ring sideroblast. So this is one important thing to remember okay while you remember this change of term. Then MDS MPN unclassifiable is now called as MDS MPN NOS. This is just to maintain the nomenclature throughout WHO 5th edition. Now coming to the summary what are the important changes? CMML diagnostic criteria undergoes major revisions including lowering the cutoff for absolute monocytosis as we have seen, adopting MDCMML and MPCMML subtypes and eliminating CMMLO. Atypical CML renamed as MDS MPN with neutrophilia. MDS MPN with ring sideroblast and thrombocytosis redefined based on SF3B1 mutation and renamed MDS MPN with SF3B1 mutation and thrombocytosis. So with this we have completed in details about CMML according to the latest WHO 5th edition and we have also discussed what are the differences with the 4th edition. Thank you very much for watching this particular video.